Okay, so to first discuss this problem, I'll first just explain what the question is saying. So we have a single block block with mass m in the center, and we have a spring on the right with a two-thirds L naught length and a spring on the left with a four-thirds L naught length. And the spring on the left has a stiffness of just K, while the spring on the right has a stiffness of 2K. So the main the main parts where I lost points in this problem was in part A, where it asked to identify which external objects are interacting with the chosen system, the chosen system being the mass block. And so I identified the spring on the left and the spring on the right, the two most obvious. But I forgot to identify the earth in the bottom surface. And I think the reason why I forgot to identify these is because it said the bottom surface supporting the block is frictionless. So I just assumed it was neg negligible and not useful. So nevertheless, the earth acts on the, um, on the block in the downward negative direction while the bottom surface acts in the positive direction and they cancel each other out. Okay, so now throughout the rest of the problem, I got everything right, where it asks, it asks for the net force on the block. It also asked for the velocity of the block, a short time, delta t after. And then it also asked for the new position of the block after that delta t as well. So in this last part, I did not get this part correct. It said determine the new force on the block. And so... Whenever I originally read this problem, I felt that it meant the force on the block at that specific point that we had calculated in part D. But whenever I looked at the correct answers, that was not exactly what they were asking. They wanted a equation for the net force at any new point in time delta t. It didn't want it at the specific position in part d. So I would write this problem out, but I felt like that was rather redundant, so I will just skip over to where the actual answers are that were given to us. And so here we can see that we we basically keep the same form as we did um, in the part B. So we take all of this here with the spring on the left. We'll start with that. And so we have Ks times the change in the distance and then multiplied by x vector because that's the parameter that we're using. And then so from this we can come down here to part E so we keep all of that the same. So we have 4 thirds L naught minus L naught. So that was exactly the same as we had. We have Ks and then the x vector. But what we have to change is what the new position will be after some delta t. So we know that from the diagram here that the block is going to move towards the left or in the negative x direction. So from that scrolling down, we know that the position, the change in position that we calculated in part D is going to be in the negative direction. So in part D, in our final answer here, we have L naught 3 minus KS L naught delta T squared over M. And so L naught over 3 was our initial position, and the KS part is the change. So since it just wants us to determine the force on the block at some delta T interval, after some delta T interval, we can just plug in that change in delta X into the KX equation, or KS equation. And then, so from that, we just plug that in. We just plug it in for this part right here, right into here. And so that's all we have to do. Now, with the right, um, the right spring, 
it's basically the exact same thing. So if we scroll up to part B, we can see we have negative 2ks because it was twice the spring force as the spring on the left. And then we have 2 thirds L0 minus L0 because that was the change in distance. And then we have multiplied by negative x because the spring on the right is going to act opposite in relation to the spring on the left. So we have to multiply it by the negative x vector. And so we scroll back down and we can see we have all of that here. Everything's the same. We have the minus L now, we have the minus x. The only thing that's different is we have this in here as well. And so the reason we did this is like before because this is the change in the position. So we need to t factor that in into our equation. And the reason that we had we have plus ks over m l naught delta t squared instead of negative like in the um, left spring is because once again it's acting in the opposite direction. And the reason why this one is negative is because we know that it's going to move to the left, the block will, and this one is positive because although it is moving to the left, it is in relation to the spring moving in the positive direction because we've multiplied this by negative x because the two springs are in opposite relation to each other in terms of position. And then so to get the total net force on the block, we just add up the spring on the left and then add up the spring on the right. And then that will be your total F net. And the reason it's only in the x dimension is because that was all we were given. So we just have this here, which is the sum of these two, and then 0, 0. And then that's our vector.